Hello again for this uh, third in the final series of uh, three videos. Um, well, I'm talking to Dr. Suparma Khan about the subject of uh, coach supported mediation, about coaches supporting their clients through mediation. And uh, Sue, I want us to, if you don't mind, to focus on that final main challenge and a really important question, which is, well, mediation is not suitable for, every, for everyone. When might it not be suitable um, and I'm thinking, for example, maybe of the an example where you might be what one or both maybe fall into this category, of what they people often call extreme narcissist behavior. But I'm sure there may, may be many reasons why it's not suitable. But, you know, can you have a chat about that, that kind of area of unsuitability? What, what are your thoughts there? Yeah. Um, I think if, even with narcissistic behavior, if it's controlled behavior, it's still suitable for mediation, maybe not face to face mediation, but shuttle mediation um, or hybrid mediation. You know, where you've got a lawyer for one or both clients in the mediation process. However, with extreme narcissistic behavior, there is absolutely no way that the other person is going to be able to get through. And almost inevitably, that is going to end up in a litigation process, which is such a shame because there's no, no reason for any divorce to end up in court. Can I delve a little bit deeper with you? Why yeah. might that be the case? With, with, with let's let's call them extreme narcissistic behavior. Let's give it kind of a label if you like. But but what is it about that person that makes them and it doesn't give them the capacity, if you like, to 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 meet the requirements of what mediation of mediation what, requ what mediation will require of them? Yeah, I mean people that are on the, the narcissistic personality disorder spectrum, the, the common factor is a lack of empathy. If they can't empathize, then they're not going to be able to negotiate. They will only see their point of view. And very often, um, we, don't, we don't talk about female narcissists as much as we talk about male narcissists. Male narcissists will try to win an argument by charm and you know sort of trying to influence a female narcissist will win it by being very nasty a female narcissist um they in a relationship they are usually much more hostile than a, a male narcissist which in turn then causes their partners to exhibit more hostile and angry behaviours during an interaction because they just don't know how to, to deal with it. And this is something that, you know, it, it sets up a, a, a pattern of emotionally abusive behaviours, which is really difficult to get out of. And when this inevi almost inevitably leads to divorce, then that um inappropriate behavior isn't going to be moderated even with a really good mediator who is you know trained to be neutral trained to calm situations down you know narcissists can be very very cruel because deep down they are so insecure that that's their only way of getting to the top is by cruelty and i would say to mediators by the way if you do have something like that you, you probably find it you may if you've missed it that if you know if you miss the fact that they are you may well end up uh, being blamed or judged uh, if it doesn't work out because uh, my experience of that kind of behavior is that uh, if things don't work out for that person the inability to take any responsibility um, which of course is wrapped up in the empathy and everything else is wrapped yeah. up in it. And therefore they need to find someone or something or some situation or another person to blame and you become that scapegoat, uh, the mediator or indeed the yeah. coach. And so we need yeah. to be, be And this, this is characteristic of narcissistic behavior. They will do what we call love bombing 
you know, you'll be the best thing since I spread. You'll be the solution to every problem. But they can turn on a sixpence and you and you'll be subjected to their narcissistic anger and abuse. And isn't isn't at the heart of this, Sue, and you'll know better, best, better than most, I guess, uh, the need to be in control, the need to feel in control, uh, and this notion I think you just talked about, which is, I think, I think I've heard it called intermittent controlling. And so yeah. you to love bomb, love bomb, make some work. And then it's, it's all about, isn't it, the... Why do, why do these people manipulate? They manipulate. They've learned to manipulate. They're experts to remain in control, uh, to keep the, themselves, to keep everything away from this fragile core. I think I'm guessing you're talking about this, this insecurity, which could be self-loathing, self-hatred, blame, shame, a shame, and so on. Yeah. And so the whole, all the behaviors are other side. So, so that's that's one one good example where it might might be unsuitable. Um, and yes, I guess we, you know, beware of that. Um, I'm also thinking again, maybe as a, with my four X lawyer head on, maybe where there's an emergency injunction, I don't know, someone, one, one person's kind of trying to shift money out, away from jurisdiction, or they want to move, you know, one person's moving their child abroad very quickly, abduction, or those kind of obvious cases yeah. where mediation is not suitable. But um, yeah, so it's not suitable in every case. I think no, that's the message. No, no. To be successful, both parties have got to be completely open and honest. Yes. Yes. At the heart of it, isn't it? It's yeah. Commitment to what? Commitment to want to solve things, resolve things together, whatever that might mean. We don't know what we don't. But this this needs to have good intent and commitment. I, I, that's what I call it. Um, if that's not there, then everything that flows, nothing, it, that needs to be, I guess, at the heart of it, um, that commitment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, just as we're kind of drawing this, the whole series to an end, sadly, um, one thing I did forget to ask you a little bit about in the first uh, session, the first video is, if someone is looking for, and by the way, guys, if you are looking to mediate, um, speak to a mediator, but... Uh, you could do a lot. You could do a lot worse. You, you very often you do. You would benefit hugely from a divorce coach. But if someone is looking to find a divorce coach, what what kind of qualifications would they be looking for? How do they know the divorce coach is properly qualified? For example, um, what distinguishes a good one from a bad one, or someone who's not qualified? Uh, and maybe a little bit about that, if if, if you would. Yeah, a good divorce coach will be trained. In, to help people in the whole range of divorce problems. And the only way that they're going to get that is if they are trained by a, an, an organisation that's got external accreditation, right. that their course has been looked at and validated by an external um organization like mm -hmm. the association of coaching or international coaching federation there are lots of people who call themselves divorce coaches but they've had no training in understanding the divorce process and therefore they don't have the contacts they don't have the knowledge they don't have the understanding they may be great coaches, but they're not good divorce coaches. They may be great for helping you to recover from divorce, but they won't necessarily have the, the knowledge and the understanding to hold your hand and walk down that path throughout your divorce process. And I'm guessing also, Sue, uh, by being uh, having been trained properly by one of these organizations you're referring to um, there is a requirement to continue with supervision uh, um, training and so on which yeah that, I think I would, that would if I want if I was going to have a divorce coach I'd want to know that they are continuing to learn themselves about their subject yeah. and so on yeah. yeah and almost as important as that is that they are fully recovered from their own divorce story because otherwise they're going to come at it from a position of sympathy, not empathy. You've got 
a good divorce coach will be able to put themselves in your shoes and help you find your solution, not give you their own story and, and walk you through their own process. Very wise words indeed. Um, and if uh, if I were coming to you as a divorce coach, what, what could I expect from my first meeting with you? I think you call it the discovery meeting. What, just broadly, just if I were my very first meeting with you, what can I what can I expect from that? <coughs> um, on the first on the first meeting, it's understanding whether you can work together. You need you. That a good divorce coach will ask you to give a very brief summary of what's happened to this point. What are you expecting? And they will then be able to say, well, yes, I will. I can help you with this. I can help you to find a solution to that problem, refer you to this person. They will have a, a wealth of knowledge and understanding. Um, divorce coaching isn't free the discovery session is okay but what it will do is help you to um, work more effectively and efficiently and save a lot of time a lot of money a lot of effort and certainly a lot of angst and if I were to kind of uh, nail a couple of words, um, focus and priorities, I guess a coach can keep you, if you're going certainly through mediation and your divorce, keep you focused on what's important to you, the whole family, the children, uh, and to help you do what you need to do, depending on what you your need from them, uh, to make a success of themselves and the mediation process. Yeah. Uh, and I, th I think you're saying that, that discovery meeting really, and I guess the other call there is, if I'm going to work with a coach, and I'm sure you're the same, when any of us are the same, we're going to work with, with someone, we need to be able to have trust and confidence and rapport in them. Yeah. And that gives, again, that discovery meeting, I guess, gives us a chance to... Yeah. Someone a chance to... Yeah, it's, a, it's understanding each other's values. You know, can you relate to this person's values? You know, my raison d'etre is to help other people. And, you know, I pride myself in the level of understanding that I can bring through my personal and professional experience. And, and that, is, that is so, I mean, all the coaches I know and you included too, are so, are so uh, passionate, uh, caring, um, and resilient people, actually, and as you say, you made the point just now, having, yes, you've experienced what it is to be in a relationship and if that relationship have ended and you're, and we've all, anyone who's been through that has learned from that and taken from that and coaches are no exceptions. Um, and so I think it is bringing that, uh, that empathy, that professionalism, that competence uh, to the clients, yeah. Sue. Look, it's been a, it's been a pleasure um, to talk, have talked to you um, over the last kind of nearly an hour. I think I often say to my clients, um, from my experience, again as a former family solicitor, uh, I left that, I left that behind about ten years ago, but it, uh, it doesn't seem that that long ago. Um, and also as a divorce coach and mediator, the most challenging, but potentially most rewarding process for my clients who are trying to sort things out is mediation. And for many of my clients, I'm convinced that using a divorce coach like you to support them through that mediation process would make the difference, a huge, really important difference between many of them not choosing or indeed choosing mediation in the first instance, and then the difference in many cases between mediation succeeding or failing. And viewers, guys, everyone watching, it's, it's because of divorce coaches like Sue, uh, experts like Dr. Sue Palmer Con, that so many more separating couples are making a success of mediation. Uh, avoiding court, which is so important, and reaching your own agreements in the best interest of the whole family, your kids, yourselves. So, Sue, look, I'd like to thank you on behalf of myself and all those guys who are going to be watching you. Uh, thank you for your time and, and thank you viewers for watching. If you'd like more information about the divorce coaching and Sue's services, please contact us. Um, it should be, I, I know Sue would be really, really happy to help and, and speak to any of you who, would, who are interested uh, in it.
Yeah, so thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. And, I, you know, if I can make a difference to one person's divorce, that's my reward. Yes, indeed. That, that, and thank you. Thank you so much for the last few words, Sue. And uh, um, yeah, that's you down to a T. Thank you very much indeed. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.